Hello, my name is Thelma Castillo and I'm the President and CEO of the Blue Water Area of Chamber of Commerce and this is Chamber on the Go. Welcome back to Chamber on the Go. My name is Thelma Castillo and I'm the President and CEO of the Blue Water Area Chamber of Commerce. And today's guest is Andrew Kircher from the Port Huron Museums. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So you've been kind of uh, doing a lot of different things these last couple of years, but the most exciting thing in our opinion recently has been that you were selected as one of the Eddie Award winners. I know, I've been, I'm, I'm very honored. <laughs> so I'm still coming down from uh, that night. It's been a couple of weeks, but right. it's... Uh, it was amazing. So. so you won the Bridges Award, which is a connection to a community, the Community Service Award. And you have been doing so many things for our community. Even despite COVID, you made it work for you and for the museum. Why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the things you've been working on? Yeah, you know, COVID certainly, you know, I'm a historian, obviously by trade. And so looking at something like COVID, I can tell you, these are historic times we're living in. Uh, what was going on with all of that was so in some ways we've seen things like that, but certainly unprecedented in our lifetimes. So when we had you know, COVID kind of come to this area in March of uh, 2020 and the shutdowns kind of began, museums were one of the first things to get their plug pulled and had to close to the public. We knew it was serious when the Henry Ford closed down in Detroit. They don't close for anything. So <laughs> uh, we knew you know, it was going to be quite serious. And we were thinking, what can we do? Well, we're, we're a nonprofit. We're a 501c3 at Port Huron Museums. So we're really interested in continuing our mission to be able to tell Blue Water Area stories, connect people with their, their history, their shared cultural heritage and said, how can we do that without just having our sites open and people coming in? Well, we can bring something to them. And we looked around, we thought about like, what do we have at our resources, at our disposal? I thought about like my skill set and uh, my background is in historic preservation, historic architecture is what I got my master's degree mm. in. So I've done a lot with old buildings and I thought, well, I can share that. Maybe it's not much, but um, I've got a cell phone. I know Facebook does live, everybody's sitting around looking for something to watch, something to take their mind off of this scary new thing. We can walk around and look at some of the buildings in town and it, it took off almost immediately. People really responded to it and it's something I'm still doing a couple of years later, being able to bring that uh, museum, bring our local area history through live walking tours, things like we have a, a show Museum Matters on, uh, with, that we work with GBS on and uh, finding those different ways to get the museum to people rather than them coming in. And of course now we're reopened so they can come back to the museum too. And it is, um, I, I think, such a worthwhile endeavor to be able to celebrate our, our shared cultural heritage like that. Well, I know when people think of you, including myself, we always say, <clears throat> he makes history come alive. That's very kind. Yeah, history is... <clears throat> I've often, I often say that you don't get into the museum world if you have a lust for money and power. <laughs> um, you do it because you're kind of passionate about it. Right. It's something that you enjoy doing. And that's definitely true of me. My grandfather got me hooked on history from the time I was a real little kid living at his house. And he has old cars and old stuff in his house and was always imparting kind of these lessons. And it's something that stuck with me. So uh, if you want somebody to blame, you can blame him. But uh, I love getting to share uh, not only history in general, but Back in 2019, when I was still kind of looking around for a job, I was working down in uh, Dearborn at the time, and it was kind of a big city for me. I've lived in tiny places like Mackinac, big cities, but when I got the chance to come back and tell my own hometown story with people from around the world, I jumped on it. I thought, what a wonderful opportunity. It's very few historians that get to be as lucky as I am. And it definitely shows in the way you communicate how you love history. It just, it, your whole face brightens up. Well, we have so much of it here. It's so, it's so fun to me. I, I, I really do uh, enjoy it. Just a side note, when I was young and my family would take me to museums, uh, my brother-in-law was a, a very uh, insistent that we had to read every piece of literature that was on the One of those exhibit. museum visitors. Yes. Read every label. Yes. And, Ma'am, we close it, at five. I know, and it was kind of tiresome. And, exhausting right for a, a young person but you know what when I do that today I when I go somewhere I read every piece that's attached to the exhibit a lot of time goes into those mm -hmm. people don't think about how much time goes into an exhibit when we work on exhibits in the museum we're we're looking and working on things sometimes two years out uh, so a lot of thought goes into it they say that uh, the average museum visitor 
Um, certainly not you reading every label. This is the average museum visitor. You get about 10 seconds yeah. to get their attention. They're going to glance at it. They say, you know, no more than maybe 150 words in a label. Try telling a story with 150 words sometimes. It's a lot harder to, to write succinctly than it is to, you can write a whole book on a subject. Right. So. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with the museums now. Yeah, the museums, uh, we have a very excited talk about unprecedented times. Uh, this particular summer, this particular year, we were actually to receive, uh, we actually received large grant funding from both the city of Port Huron and some corporate sponsorships from our friends over at uh, DT, DTE, ITC, and uh, the Blue Water Visitor uh, and Convention Bureau. Uh, we're very fortunate we're able to offer free admission to all of our sites, and this is something we've never really been able to do, uh, so it's really exciting to get. We've had record-breaking attendance at all of our sites. And of course, we always have you know new exhibits coming in and out. Right now we have, for example, our children's exhibit, Discovery City. Uh, it's sticking around till February of 2023, very fun. It's a great place when it's hot out, it's air conditioned, it never rains on Discovery City. But we have you know smaller exhibits that rotate in and out as well as our, our permanent ones. I know uh, just today we started talking about what's showing up in August. Uh, I won't give away the whole game, but um, we're going to have some really cool stuff on holograms, actually, which is a technology that has a lot of roots here uh, in Michigan and the surrounding areas. So always lots going on with those and lots of new programs uh, as well that we're excited about. We have a new programs coordinator and kind of director uh, at the museum. So not only are we doing a lot of the events that people like and have seen year after year, things like SandFest that's coming up in August, our powwow is coming back also in August, but we're doing new things. One event that was really popular was Sea Shanties on the Ship, where we had a singer sing sea shanties, try saying that a few times fast, <laughs> uh, on the Huron, served some drinks, everybody got you know, a little bit of rum, got in the mood, and it was a, an immediate sellout. So we're doing that again later on at the end of the year. So it's a great mix of new, old, we're all about the old at the museums, and uh, wonderful opportunity this year with the free admission for people to come in. One of the other new things that we're doing that we're really excited about, we're working with uh, some of our friends in the business world. Uh, uh, Steve and Michelle over at Country Style Market are huge supporters of the museum. We've been working with them on their renovations at 310 Huron at uh, Country Style Port Huron. And we're really excited. We have got kind of a pop-up exhibit in their basement, which I think is going to be opening real soon. So it's this it's an amazing down there. I'm sure you've been down there. It's amazing. Every time I go down, it looks more amazing. I keep reminding them, like, you guys are running a grocery store, not a theme park. <laughs> like, you know, this is, it's I've another, never seen it's anything It's another like attraction it. to it's, bring people to their store. It really is. So we're working with them to put out uh, some of the artifacts from the museum to really enhance what they've got going on in their basement. And it's definitely something you won't want to miss. Tell us a little bit about your walking tours and the trolley tours. Yeah, that's another thing that's, <laughs> that's really fun. We've got a series of trolley tours that we do. We have one scheduled basically every single week of the summer, and we also do rentals. So we have a lot of businesses, even families that do family reunions. They kind of do custom rentals of the tour, and they head out our trolley. Uh, there's the 10-cent tour that the Blue Water Area Transit does, and we're, we're good friends with them. We did trolley tours with them for many years. That's actually where our trolley came from. And the way I've kind of described it is their tour is a very broad river, but kind of shallow. It you know, takes you around, and it gives you really the highlights of Port Huron history. I recommend it. There's no better value than a 10-cent tour. Our tours are much more narrow, but a little more in-depth. Gets you kind of deep into some of the subjects we talk about, and literally gets you off the beaten path. We head out into, we have a neighborhoods tour. We have an architectural highlights tour, and obviously the most popular is murder and mayhem. That's been so popular, it sells out every time we do it, that I've actually written a second one that's going to premiere this summer called More Murder, More Mayhem, because <laughs> it didn't all fit in the first one. So, uh, and we're actually going to be working on uh, some Prohibition-themed tours with Steve and Michelle. Uh, some of the local bars in town is going to be kind of a bar crawl. Uh, we're working out the last couple details on that. That's going to be a really fun one. And then those are all with the trolley, and we also do walking tours. Um, I endeavor to do lots of downtown walking tours on, like, First Fridays, some of the big events that they do downtown. I try and offer one of those. It's a great, amazing look at some of the buildings we have downtown. And a new walking tour for this year is actually the Blue Water Boardwalk walking tour. So everybody loves walking along the boardwalk there. You go see the bridge, you see the river. Well, what I have started to do, tickets are, are now available. I'm going to kind of see how it works. It's one of these new things. Um, we're, we're kind of taking a cue out of your guys' book. It's a lunch and learn. Right. So rather than learning about 
um, you know, a great business practice or a nonprofit opportunity. Ours is learning a little bit about history. So folks are going to walk from Pine Grove Park. They walk with me up to uh, the Blue Water Bridge. We have lunch at the Thomas Edison Depot. Chef Shells is uh, going to be providing some of the lunch options. So another great chamber member and opportunity to work with them. And we walk back, and there's so much history there that I think it's going to be a really fun opportunity. So if somebody's got, you know, a couple hours in the middle of the day, hour and a half, or some retired folks, we'll see how it goes. So some of those dates are available in late July and August. Should be a fun time because there's did, history all around us. I did see that and I think it's a great opportunity for people to be outside and learn a little about history. We, we have got lots. I'm fond of saying that uh, I tell people to enjoy the history in their own backyard because you know people think about oh well Europe has a lot of history or the East Coast. Like, oh, look around. Look right here. There's so much in the Blue Water area that we have to explore. Are we kind of lucky though in terms that we have five museums? You know, in, and, in this and, small town, you know, even more than that, we've got um, not only the R four sites, we have uh, the Knowlton Museum, and there's a couple kind of museum experiences at SC four. It's incredible to know that you know, by my count, depending on how you want to count it, you know, like seven museums in a town of less than thirty thousand people. Right. Per capita, that's got to be up there. I mean, that's that's some big numbers uh, for a community like ours. So I think we have these amazing opportunities to get to share that with people in our town, but also as a driver. One of the things that's great is we get to pe bring people in from other communities. Now, I'm not an economist, but I, I do like to say that the best money is somebody else's. Uh, so if we can bring people from outside of our community to this area to visit our tourist attractions, to visit our museums, they come, they shop, they go to restaurants, they stay at hotels, they spend their money here, and it's great for us, great for them. They get to enjoy themselves. Andrew, I completely agree with you. And uh, actually, in the last couple of weeks, we've had people come into the chamber office. What can I do? And it's a great asset to say visit our museums. They're free and you get the opportunity. You got to ask them how much time you got. <laughs> right. I mean, you better book another night because there's a lot. <laughs> right. So I think, you know, whoever decided to uh, figure out that it, the best way to get those museums to, for people to enjoy them, especially the young kids, to offer it free, it was a genius idea. And I yeah. know the numbers are going up because I know Veronica shares that with the city manager, and he shares it with a number of people as well. Yeah, we are very excited. We're hoping that, um, you know, we don't have all the details hammered out. We're hoping it might be kind of an experiment that really yielded a lot of results, and we hope that we might be able to make that continue to work into the future because it is proven itself that people are interested in our cultural sites. They want to come out. We want to eliminate those barriers as much as possible for anyone who, who wants to come to one of those sites and share in it. And like I said, it brings in people from, from all over. So It really, truly does. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience about Andrew Kircher or museum well i you know i am like i said i'm very honored uh, to have received the the recognition we talked about at the beginning but it's something that i'm passionate about i think our our community has so much i'm invested in the community my wife and i bought a house on on military street we've put a lot of uh blood sweat and tears into it we're in for the long haul so uh say nice things about port huron i think we have so much going on here um that although i'm focused a lot on the past i can tell you we've got a really bright future we sure do, and uh, it's people like yourself that really make it a, a great place to not only uh, live, but to play and to enjoy. Well, thank you. That's very kind. And the look on your face when you won at the Eddie Awards, that was priceless, <laughs> and I know how excited you were. You were really well, excited. Well, no one beat my grandma. I think she was the <laughs> most excited person in the county. So. Well, we were lucky that she was able to join us, and very lucky that... Um, your whole family got to witness the joy that you felt that night. Yeah, it was wonderful. I'm, I'm not going to forget that anytime soon. Well, that's good because we also have it on video. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Andrew, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you for sharing everything that you're doing with the Port Huron Museums, everything that you're doing for the community, and you're definitely the definition of why you won the Bridges Award. Oh, well, thank you, and thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. As we sign off on Chamber on the Go, this program was presented by Blue Water Healthy Living, sponsored by Grant Smith Health Insurance Agency, and produced by GBS Media. Thelma Castile, to the next time we meet, signing off. <laughs>